The Duluth model promotes the view that hitting is a conscious strategy by men to assert their dominance over women. It's so named because it was drafted after a single crime where a man killed a woman that took place in Duluth, Minnesota in 1981. The entire theory is based on this one event, yet it's applied to all men in domestic violence incidents as a model of male behaviour. This is equivalent to taking Margaret Thatcher as a representative model of all women. The Duluth model makes some serious assumptions about men. In particular, it asserts that all men are trained by our culture to subjugate women, and that the battering of women by men is commonplace. Um, and at the same time, it's a combined mm, refuge. Isn't that quite yeah. rare? Oh, it's very rare, yeah. I mean, in fact, originally, they, um, not intentionally, they started mixing the bloke. The blokes would be in the same house as the women. It's actually going very well. But then, of course, the women's project got to hear of it and kind of that. It, it breaks all their taboos that you can't possibly have any men in a women's refuge because men are beasts. You know, they, the men are not allowed in women's refuges. Do you know that? You, you are not allowed. You know, anybody that does any work there, cleaning, gardening, has to be a woman because being a man, you're just an animal. I find that amazing. You couldn't do that with any other group once again. No. You couldn't. No men can work in refuges. No men can sit on the board. No men can have anything to do with domestic violence that are, as far as the uh, feminist movement's concerned. And boys over 12 are very rarely allowed to go into any of the refuges, which is an appalling burden to put on mothers. So why wouldn't boys over the age of 12 be allowed into a refuge? Because they're potentially men and all men, according to the feminist movement, are batterers and rapists because they are members of the patriarchy. In other words, they are born men, so they are born with the mark of Cain on their foreheads. And this ludicrous political ideology has funded the persecution of men and fathers and boys for the last 30 years, with the full connivance of all the agencies involved, including the government. The Duluth model states that the causes of a man's violence is never related to any problems that he might have, like drugs or previous abuse he has suffered, mental health issues, stress or alcoholism. The sole cause, according to the proponents of this model, are men themselves. Men are the problem. But of course this is unsupportable. For example, most people have their first ever experience of violence at the hands of their mothers. <laughs> Boy, I will slap the caps off your knees. Because if you have your fill, not touch the grind. No, mommy. I will knock you into last night. The county social worker says it all goes back to my mom and holding my hand on the stove. I could stick this fork in your eye. I think my mother's the only woman that hasn't hurt me, actually. Uh, well, she physically beat me, but, you know, that's... Yeah, well, same here. That's, yeah, but that's okay. That's cultural. <laughs> <laughs> I was beaten until my head was bleeding. <laughs> I mean, Jesus, I, I was you see my beaten now. damn hard. But then again. Well, that's, that's only on the surface. Um, and I would never do that to my children because I experienced it. And some women sexually abuse their children. This is particularly prevalent with single mothers. It would quite often just be them and the mother in the home. And... For the little boys, when they were little boys, they, they were almost used as if they were the husband. So should we have news articles stating that women are the problem? That all mothers are violent to their children and single mothers are likely to be raging child sexual abusers? Or should we understand that this behaviour is not a general problem with women and is indicative of problems with the particular females involved? A woman abandons her baby. And abandoned at two days old, the baby girl discovered in a cardboard box. Anyone abandoning such a tiny, helpless baby must have felt desperately alone and very scared. The police understand that, and they're keen to stress to Becky's mum they want to help her. Most of all, they want to reunite her with her beautiful daughter. A man disciplines his child. A father of two revealed today how he was separated from his family after being spotted by a policeman giving his three-year-old son a single but hard smack on the bottom. In the six months it took for the case to come to court, the man was banned from the family home and allowed no unsupervised contact. So a woman who abandons her baby to die next to rubbish bins on a freezing November day, a woman who actually throws her baby away, should be reunited as soon as possible with the child. All is forgiven. Yet a man who smacks his child on the backside, maybe to stop him robbing me in 20 years, is such a dangerous parent, he has to be removed from his own house. What is it about our society that's so determined to punish men at every opportunity, yet afford women every excuse imaginable for their crimes? Here's a quote from materials used by workers in the domestic violence industry.
This is not directed at some men, it's directed at all men. It holds no explanation for female violence. Look what I got for a favorite girl. Motherfucker! Oh, Jesus Christ! I do! Oh, I hope you die! This reveals the theory's profound bias against men, and therefore its uselessness as a model of domestic violence. So why is it still the model most often referred to by professionals in domestic violence counselling, by charities, and by government? When it came down to domestic abuse, um, they would then go further and actually say, in almost all cases, it's violence by women, sorry, by men against women, and that the few occasions where it's women against men uh, is so small as to not warrant any sort of comment at all. And in fact, I suspect if you press them on that, they would probably say, well, the men were abusers and it was just the woman hitting back. Now, I don't know what drives these women to hate men so much, um, but when you read stuff like that, where they say in almost all cases, and that all of their literature is absolutely just soaked up with uh, the male is the violent one, the male is the aggressor, the, the male is the criminal, the woman is not responsible for it. I mean, they almost actually talk about women as if they're some sort of low IQ imbecile. I think the men would tell you they were not taught to dominate women in their families of origin. I think they'd tell you just the opposite, that they were taught to respect, care for and protect women, even at risk to themselves. Men have always been like this. Men are taught and conditioned from their earliest years that one of the worst things you can do is hit a woman. In their entire lives, most men have never hit a woman, even when a woman has hit them. I am a doctor. Move it. Stitch this, mate. Oh. Oh. I would say that this is the experience of millions of men in this culture. Oh, now you're going to leave your low-life piece of shit. You know what? Here, take your fucking dinner. So how many men do you know that um, beat their wives or girlfriends? You know, beat them up regularly. Regularly? Yeah, well, we'll say regularly. <laughs> and okay, then and then we'll move on, yeah? You know, often. Even at all. Uh, uh, yeah, how often. Many, um, yeah. I don't know anyone. You don't know anyone? Personally, no. Yeah, you don't know any men that beat their wives or girlfriends? No. Okay, how about you? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anybody. No, I don't think... Oh, I don't know anyone, really, that, that could even potentially be like that, really. No, that's why my mates, you know, share the same principles, you know. Um, I had a friend who, whose wife used to get, you know, used to have a hell of a temper on her. And she used to swing from him, like, but he used to have to, like, restrain her. But that's all he could do. Again, he feared than anything else because he could end up, you know, in trouble for defending himself against a crazy wife. Because, again, who's going to believe the man? Have you ever hit a woman? Uh, no, I don't think so. Always had me to add the cut because I would not smack her back. I would not hit her back purely and simply because she was a woman. He had to restrain her. And she'd have bruises on her wrist where he restrained her once because she was physically beating him. He had a black eye and everything. Have you ever been hit by a woman? Yeah. Um, was that a slap or a punch? Um, slaps, punches. <laughs> I'm not a nasty guy as well, you know. I just don't know why I got hit. But you didn't respond in kind? You didn't hit back? No. No, um, when they were going to hit me multiple times, after the first time, I just grabbed their arm to stop them doing it again. Andrew, have you ever been hit by a woman? Yeah. OK, how did she hit you? Um, she hit me in the arm. With her arm, or what did she hit you with? Um, f first it was with her handbag, and then it was with her arm. <laughs> my, my laugh. <laughs> Sorry, it's I've been abused my laugh. <laughs> um, I don't know, I guess it's just... It's it. I just wouldn't do it. I think maybe it's, um... It's guys don't hit girls kind of attitude, isn't it? But the Duluth model ignores this and frames all men as dominators and abusers in waiting. The truth is that these accusations are an insult to men. Men should be offended at the claims that they're commonly violent towards women. Because it's the one you bought me in Brighton. I don't want it now. Don't you hit me! Hit you, you infamous creature. How dare you suggest that a thing? It's you who've hit me. You've, you've wounded me to the heart. Even when faced with female aggression, men overwhelmingly seek to avoid physicality with women. 
claws in, you cat. How dare you show your temper to me? Sit down and be quiet.